Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do another action sequence, and this is for the bitter end one. You guys saw in the last uh, episode, if you've seen the last episode, how to do the holy circle one, but now I'm going to show you how to make the bitter end. It's a little bit longer, uh, and it's got a bunch of stuff that you can take out and, and change up to, to make it your own version. But uh, let me show it to you one more time in case you didn't see the last video. <clears throat> Oops, everybody so the bitter end is uh, my blue mage's limit break, and it's going to have a 100 PP cost. Of course, I set it to zero to show you. And uh, it basically does a lot of different things. Uh, to start off, it um, curses the enemy with a weakness to ice. So that uh, since it's an ice-based physical, uh, ice physical attack, it's going to um, do double damage with uh, all three of its attacks. It also adds a refresh to the party. That was pretty cool. But uh, let me show you how to do that. So go into the skill that you want to give this uh, action sequence to, and uh, you can give it whatever type of damage you want, and uh, specify <coughs> HP damage sp specifically for this one. Um, give it a name, an icon, a description, let the player know what it's going to do. Give it a skill type. The scope for this would be one enemy since all of its moves are in uh, target action. Um, MP cost, I don't know if I would give it any MP cost, but it I sort of use it as a limit break since it does multiple things. <clears throat> so I would probably give it like really high TP cost, maybe a hundred. If you're using like a TP script, then you might want to give it more or less depending on how much TP you've allocated. Occasion, uh, basically we're going to make it battle screen, not, not always. Um, no repeats are required. Um, I made it a physical attack and I gave it a, a simple animation. Um, but you can give it whatever message or required weapon that you like. Um, the attack formula for this is attack or A dot ATK times A minus B dot defense or DEF minus B dot MDF minus B dot agility. So the enemy's defense, magic defense, and agility will come into play to counter uh, act the, the attack times eight. <clears throat> and you can change that, of course, too. You won't need any effects. Um, let's start at the top. We're going to do bracket setup action. And of course, I'm going to copy paste this in the description. But uh, as you've seen in the last one that I put the, in the description, you can't put brackets in the YouTube description. So I'll just exclude the brackets. So you'll have to kind of, if you don't know already, uh, access the help file to just look at the very beginning where it shows you all the actions, what you need in brackets. <clears throat> but basically all you'll need in brackets are the setup action, uh, when you close the setup action, when you start your target action, and when you close your target action. That's the only time you'll need brackets. So if you put those uh, eight characters in, simple, you can just copy paste this whole thing. But going through it, let me explain uh, how most of these things work. Uh, we're gonna move actors, and then uh, we're moving them forward 250 pixels, and that's 20 frames. Then we're gonna wait for the movement. Then we're gonna fade out the screen. Um, it doesn't seem to work. I, maybe I'm missing uh, something here. You need to wait for a fade or something. I haven't found that command. Uh, then we're gonna hide the battle heads up display. So it has like a more of a full screen effect. I wanted it to kind of like fade out the screen and then come back in and then start the action. It sort of skips past that really quickly, so I'm not sure. So you can get rid of these two if you want to save some space. I don't know why. But then you're going to display action, and that's going to show the text on the top saying the name of the skill. You're going to flash the screen, um, this color here, for 40 frames um, really quickly. You're going to show an animation, and now this would be uh, different in your game. You're going to basically try a few different numbers on all the animations and uh, you'll get uh, the skill will look completely different depending on what animations you pick and it'll be fun just to try to put this in your game and <clears throat> give different animations and see how it looks so customize this as always this is a template for you to modify and make it your own but we're going to show the animation on the user then we're going to show another animation on the target this is at the same time and then we're going to add a state of a uh, uh, this state is 71, and on my uh, states here, uh, I might uh, just show you how to make this one. 
if you want to do like a cursed state, <clears throat> it's really easy. Just give it a name, let the player, or just so the player knows what it does. Uh, and then probably if it's an elemental curse, you'd want an icon that has that element, just to make it relevant. Now that's a long duration. Um, I'll probably edit all of these durations later on to be like maybe six to eight turns or something. But you're going to remove it at the end of battle, and you're going to set a turn in, give it some durations, probably like eight to ten or something. Or even five would be fine. Uh, but that's all you would need to do there. And then to, uh, for the traits, to make them take more damage, you would have to multiply that number by a number higher than 100%. So you go to Element Rate, uh, under Rates. It's on the first one where you're starting on. Select the element that you want to curse them with, and then increase that number by anything over 100%. If you wanted to, to do double damage, you would do 200%. And that's it for that state. So um, that this number right here will ref reflect what you use uh, in the skill itself. So when I'm adding state 71 here, that's going to add that state to the target. Uh, now we're changing the opacity of the user by 50%. That's going to take for uh, 30 frames. Basically making uh, making the, the caster or the user look a little bit invisible or translucent. Uh, then we're going to wait for all of those animations that we just displayed. So we're going to float the user so he goes up. Uh, he rises up like a giant leap, basically. It's like a jump, but he kind of like floats it. I think it looks cool. Uh, then we're going to set the targets to immortal because we're doing a multi-hit attack and I don't want them to die, or we wouldn't want them to die in the middle of the attack because uh, then it would look funny. But that's it for the setup action. Uh, then the target action starts and we're going to do this. I actually got this from Yanfly. This is uh, to detect if you want to make this a, a, a ranged attack or give this attack to a ranged attack, you can do that as well. I'm not sure how it would work, but I just left it in here just to give you guys options. So I copy pasted this part from uh, Yanfly's attack script, but uh, if you want to use it, I'll, I'll read through it really quickly. If user.attack, capital M on motion, open and close parentheses, is not equal to, so exclamation mark, <coughs> two equal sign, and then uh, single quotation, missile, in the single quotation, then we're, then we're going to move the user, targets, uh, front, 20 frames. <coughs> Otherwise, perform start. Then we're going to end that conditional branch. Now we're going to zoom in. This will take action uh, pack 3. So I'll put a link in the description for Yanfly's plugins. You'll need uh, action sequence uh, 1, 2, and 3 for these. Uh, then you're going to wait for the zoom. Uh, we're going to camera screen target, front center, 10 frames. Camera focus target, front center, 10 frames. We're going to wait for the camera. We're going to float the user 0% over 15 frames. It's going to bring him back down. Then we're going to wait for that movement. I don't know if this is... Uh, required right here. I just threw it in there. I was sort of just throwing anything I could in here just to, you know what, it's fun to just look through all the things that you can do, throw a bunch of them together and just see what happens and then just tweak that a little bit and change it and uh, it's kind of fun. Play around with some action sequences and you'll, you'll, get, some, you'll get some enjoyment I'm pretty sure. And we're going to jump the user 150%. Uh, we're going to camera pan to the right because we're moving all of our, <clears throat> we're moving all of our, uh, our, uh, target, not our targets, our allies forward just a little bit. So we're going to uh, pan the camera to the right, we're going to wait for the camera, then we're going to show a motion attack user, uh, that's going to show him swing the sword as the, the whirlwind, as he comes down the whirl, he or she comes down the whirlwind, and he swings the sword, and everybody gets that, uh, that state. We're going to action animation on the target, so it's going to show this animation, uh, then we're going to action effect, so this is going to issue damage for the first time. And then we're going to death break sense of counterattack. Uh, you don't want to have to be dead and still be able to finish your move. If you die here, that's the end of the action. Uh, animation, <clears throat> once again, change this number to whatever animation you want. Give it some custom animations and have fun with it. Uh, and we're going to set that to the actors. Uh, we're going to add state 15 to the actors. This is actually adding uh, MP regen, I think. So let's go to states. Yeah, refresh MP regen. So if if this isn't uh, built into your new game, how you'd make a refresh is you would just um, give it a name and icon, priority 50, remove it at the end of battle if you want to. Uh, turn in, set the last four, four to five, six turns, something like that. And then uh, you would do an extra parameter under param, and you would go MP regeneration and give it a positive number. And then every turn they'll regenerate that many, that percentage of their maximum MP. But once again, 
this number here is going to reflect the number you use on that skill. So we are adding state 15 right here on all the actors. We're going to wait for the animation that we played right before the add state. We're going to wait for the jump. We're going to show the motion attack user again and we're going to do action animation on the target. We're going to wait for that animation and then wait 10 seconds. Just um, You can get rid of this if you want it to go by faster. Or you can install the um, uh, the speed up battle, the quick battle script plugin, which is really neat. You just hold the enter button. I think I've gone over that enough though. Um, then you're going to attack animation uh, target, wait for animation. You're going to motion victory the actors, just to have a little bit more things going on while this is happening. <clears throat> probably didn't even notice it, but uh, you, if you notice, if you look again, you probably will notice it this time. Uh, and then we're going to action effect, so this issuing damage again. And then it's going to do a death break in case of counter attack or magic reflect, depending on your hit type. Um, move the enemy to point uh, to this point, 400 by 300. That's going to move the enemy up. Uh, most likely it'll move it up. See, this is specifying a current a, spe a special location. So you you might have to change this number right here. This is your x axis and this is your y axis. And this basically goes from the top left is 0, 0, and the bottom right, if you've set your uh, resolution to 1280 by 720 like I have, this would be 1280 by 720 all the way in the bottom right. So you can kind of imagine uh, where it's going to be if this is 0, 0, and all the way across up in the top right is going to be um, 1280 by 0, and then all the way in the bottom, 1280 by 720, and over here is 0 by 720. So you kind of get the idea. Use a calculator to cut the... the the number of pixels you're using in half and that'll give you a good estimate on where you want them to be on the screen and you can just put that number in that's what I did <clears throat> then we're gonna move the actor to the front base of wherever they went and then that'll take 20 frames we might do a wait for movement right here if you want I just opted not to and then we're gonna shake the screen because it looks cool and we're also gonna tint the screen right here and we're gonna do an action animation on the target we're gonna wait for that animation <clears throat> then we're gonna do an action effect we would normally do a death break right here, but since this is all just like resetting everything, uh, you can put a death break if you want right here. We're going to shake the screen three, uh, the the three nine thirty for thirty frames is specifying power, um, opacity user. We're setting the user back so that they're they don't stay like translucent through the rest of the battle. <clears throat> Let that go for fifteen frames. We're going to reset the camera, we're going to show the battle HUD, and we're going to put the screen tinted back to normal, and then we're going to close off our target action. Whew, that was a mouthful. It's a very long uh, action sequence, and not everything that's in here needs to be in here, and there could be some more things that you could throw in there. So take this as a template, and you can use that to change it up, make it your own. Hopefully you guys like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and all your support. If you have a suggestion or a special request, you can leave that in the comments below. I read all my comments. You guys are important to me. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.